So here we go, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Meet the Oppo, the series where we get the lowdown on town's next opponent. And next up is another little trip to Devon. Um, of course, live on Sky, 12 p.m. Exeter City is town's next opponent. I'm joined, and it's a pleasure to be joined by John Beer, the man who is a former Exeter City trustee and a co-host of the My New Football Club, of course, covering all things Exeter City. Um, John, thank you very much for joining me, friend. How are you? Thanks for having me. No, I'm very, I'm very good. I'm excited to be here. Uh, it's it's going to be a good game, and we've got all sorts to talk about. We do, mate. And um, you know, in the green room, we we're chatting about you know we've played each other in, in recent years, you know, in cup games and stuff. But the last time we played in the league was in the '50s, so both of us weren't alive. I don't think there's probably many people about who went to those <laughs> no. games. If you are watching this and you did go to them games, <laughs> then let us let us know. And um, yeah. yeah. A long, long time ago. Um, but both League One football clubs now, you guys, of course, won promotion last year and you're doing pretty well this year. Uh, ninth in League One at the moment. Uh, yeah, how would you recap it so far? Yeah, like, like you said, we spoke about it off air slightly and, and briefly, but it's been it's been a really enjoyable start to life in League One. I think it's been grounding as well as encouraging, if you understand what I'm trying to say, because we've had some really poor results we've lost to some teams that we probably would have liked to have beaten some teams that have come down you know the likes of Cheltenham and Burt and those teams came down they sat in their shape and we struggled to break them down struggled to to create any chances and obviously as a result uh, got some negative results but overall I think any Exeter City fan is going to be over the moon with the start to uh, to League One life we've had a few bumps in the road we've obviously Matt Taylor leaving and you know then who, who was going to be the manager we had a few weeks of uncertainty but yeah, overall, it's been a, an incredible start to League One life and long may it continue, like I said. Yeah, definitely. It's been a lot of goals. You guys have been scoring a lot. Of course, you got a good result um, last time out, you know, beating Peterborough. Of course, a late yeah. winner. You always love a late winner. Um, although yeah. it was still early. It was still early in the 90th minute, like 91st minute, but still, you can't. Yeah. It's a late winner because it's yeah. the final goal. That was good. But uh, yeah, re really good win. Um, let's talk about the current mood then, John. You know, really mentioned it already, but it is all happy days. But also, Gary Caldwell, you know, he's now your manager. How has that been so far under him? Yeah, Gar Gary's come in and and actually sort of brought a breath of fresh air. I think it was so hard to come in and take over from the incredible job that Matt had done. So anyone who was coming in was going to have a, a real challenge on their hands. But he's come in and we've seen clips and footage of him behind the scenes and what he's like. He's a motivator. He gets players to, to believe in him and believe in his style of play. At the moment, I think we're still in that sort of Matt Taylor philosophy phase. We're still playing how Matt played. Um, I don't think Gary Caldwell's way of playing is too dissimilar, but like he said, he's got little changes he wants to implement and bring in. But the overall mood at the club is is incredible. We're selling out, you know, nearly, not quite selling out, but getting really good capacities every week, six, six and a half thousand, which is incredible for us. We've, we're doing really well on the pitch, off the pitch. Everything seems to be going in, in, in the right direction and people are just excited. It's a good place to be at the moment. Yeah, definitely. And, um, also, your players as well. We were saying off air again, like like teams like Forest Green, other teams like that who have been promoted. They've lost a lot of their key players, but mm -hmm. let's put the team out last time against Peterborough. A lot of them are your promotion winning side. You yeah. know? So pick out the players we should look out for. Of course, there'll be one player that is um, going to be a talking point going into the game, but he won't be allowed to play because he's a low knee and it is Rakeem Harper. Um, but we we said we're gonna we're gonna do organise another video to yeah. have a little bit more insight from you about his loan spell so far. But yeah, he won't be playing, so we don't need to worry about talking about him because yeah, he won't impact the game at any point in this one. But yeah, the players here though, they're going to be playing. Um, who should we look out for? Yeah, I, actually, looking at the starting eleven that started against Peterborough, it just it makes me it makes me really happy for for an, a, a magnitude or a multitude of different reasons. So first of all, the amount of academy products in that starting eleven is something to be really really proud of. So Key, Hartridge, Collins, Sparks, I'd class. Jay Stansfield is an academy product. Although we sold him young, he's still one of ours. And then also uh, Matt Jay in there. So a load of academy products. Really, really exciting team. Then you've got your Giovanni Browns, who's been incredible this season. Uh, I, I was, you know, guilty of saying earlier on in the season, maybe he's not, maybe he's just good enough to play at the top end of League One, but can't quite go any further. But I think he's proven this season that he's more than capable of holding his own in this league, being one of the best players in this league and probably being able to play in the championship as well. He should he definitely deserves a chance to try and prove himself in the championship. I think 
the one thing that everyone was worried about from last season was replacing the keeper. We had Cam Dawson, who was incredible for us last season. One of the biggest reasons why we got promoted, kept clean sheet after clean sheet, big save after big save. And he, that people felt as though he was going to be a huge loss. And then we came in and replaced him with Jamal Blackman, who was in the championship last season, an incredible keeper, big stature, commands his area. You know, we don't need to speak that much on Jamal Blackman. He's a well-known keeper at, at this level, but, the team is just exciting. It's attacking. It's free flowing. Um, but for me personally, the proudest thing is the number of academy prospect, uh, academy graduates, sorry, in there because that for me that's what Exeter City is all about. It's the lifeblood of the club, and yeah, it's, I, I absolutely love it. But it brings a smile to my face just seeing the lineup. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, because it's just you can sing that song, can't you? You know, he's one of our own, and yeah. you know, you know, Richard Tan. I've got a history of that bringing you know youth players through. Um, unfortunately, not not as many in recent years, but um, yeah, I'm sure every club, you're just proud to see one of your own putting on a shirt. And of course, definitely them last year winning promotion and holding their own in League One, which is good to see. Um, yeah. Let's talk about then the style of play and just what sort of game we should expect from exercise. You know, I've been able to watch a few games and, you know, there's a lot of goals, there's entertaining football. Um, yeah, what, what should we expect? Yeah, I think I think a lot of goals is, is a fair, fair prediction uh, because... As, as much as we score a fair few goals, you know, we conceded four goals back to back to back a few weeks ago. Um, so just as many as we score, we're conceding and we're attacking, we're free flow and we leave ourselves exposed at times trying to go for the game or trying to get a point or whatever it may be. But it's an exciting team to watch. Uh, it's for, like, like I said, free flowing, three at the back. You've got your wing backs high up the pitch. You're always looking to, to get the ball wide, bring your creative players into play, like Giovanni Brown. And if you look at the starting lineup there, you know, we're missing even key players. You know, Czech Diabate, one of our academy prospects and, and graduates, again, would start at centre back. Where Sam Nombe is not in that starting 11, who obviously scored. Um, who has been scoring, he's got 10 goals this season. He's He's been incredible. So, Although the the lineup itself it, it, that's in front of us now looks incredibly strong, it can be stronger, which is the most impressive thing. The only worry that we've had this season is the depth. You know, we've struggled to fill the bench a few times. We've had to put a few eight, under 18s on the bench. So that's my only concern in terms of the, the squad. But we've been in, really good to watch this season. And the promises that have been made by previous managers, Matt Taylor and now Gary Caldwell, are of being held, you know, we're we're playing expansive, free flowing, attacking football, which is what what the fans want to see. Definitely. And uh, how are you feeling then, John? How are you feeling going into this one? It's your town second in the league, but then the record shows Exeter have got one over town in the last few years in cup competitions and stuff. But um, yeah, how are you feeling? Yeah, it's it's interesting because, like we said, we haven't played you in the league since since the fifties, and I don't quite know what to expect. Obviously, you guys are absolutely flying. Uh, you got an incredible squad, incredible set of fans. You're a massive team at, at this level, so the the pressure is probably more on yourselves to come down and get a result, which is you know, which is what what we thrive off. We thrive off teams coming down and feeling like they need to get a result, and then getting caught out or punished for for you know maybe certain mistakes that might happen as a result of the pressure that that comes from needing to get a result or feeling you know the, the pressure of needing to get a result as, as a big team but I, I'm, I'm ever the pessimist when it comes to to Exeter City I'm always looking at, at glass half empty unfortunately so I'm, I'm ex probably expecting you guys to pick up the three points but I think it'll be a, a tougher game than than people have probably got written down. Yeah, definitely. And of course, the game is on Sky before the last few. I know, I know there'll be some listeners who will be a little bit annoyed with me saying this again, but we did have like a TV curse and we kept losing on TV. But we've been <laughs> able to, the back to back games on Sky, we've been able to win. But um, it's once again, it's a it's a bit of an annoying kickoff, cause, you know, 12 o'clock kickoff yeah. on, on a Saturday. But once again, I know, yeah, town fans have been selling out that away end once again. And that's sort of next question, really, John. Um, any advice for some fans who are coming to Exeter for the first time? There'll be a few, I'm sure, have gone before in those cup games in 2020 mm -hmm. and 2018. But is there anything that has changed and anywhere they could go? Um, to be to be to be fair, we're quite a, a welcoming club, so you can be anywhere in and around the ground. There's loads of local pubs just down the road, like five, ten minute walk from the ground. But in, in my honest opinion, I think the best place to be is is the ground. All the fans are really welcoming. We've got loads of ambassadors around to help you get to where you need to be, and we're always encouraging fans to come in and drink, away fans to come in and drinking at in our centre spot, which is the the pub at the ground, because we want you know it's 
it's, it should be a nice atmosphere at football. There shouldn't be any hostilities. You should be able to go, have a drink, enjoy your time with your friends, maybe meet some away fans or, or home fans, uh, vice versa. So, yeah, I, I'd honestly recommend just being in and around the ground, take up the atmosphere, and there's places to be, places to drink, food stands, all sorts. So, yeah, it's for me, to be, it should be at the ground. Yeah, sounds good, mate. Look forward to that. Really do look forward to that. Um, well, John, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me. Any other business? Any else you want to mention? Uh, I'm not too sure. I don't think so. I think uh, one of the questions I had in, in my mind was, obviously, you've got Kyle Edwards, who was mm-hmm. used to play for us. How, how's he been getting on? How, how have you guys found him? Uh, I think once again, like last year, you know, it was a whole, you know, the word we had to use was time to jail. And of course, Paul Cook got sacked. Kieran McKenna came in. But um, yeah, Kyle Edwards, he's probably now coming into his best form. So probably mm-hmm. not, not, you know, what extra fans want to hear because, no. um, he, he, you know, he's a very tricky player, a pacey player. Um, and he's got, you know, he scored, I don't know if you saw it, he did score a really good goal yeah, I did too, um, yeah. against Cambridge. Cross shot, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's a player who has got talent, you know, undoubtedly, but he's just not been able to really do it consistently just yet. But he hasn't had the opportunity to. So yeah, I think a player to look out for definitely um for extra fans and i'm sure you know possibly he could start so um yeah. i'm sure um what was that like a loan spell yes yeah, so he was on loan with us from west brom uh and he actually we we got to the playoff final the year that he was with us him and we had him and kane wilson on loan from west brom and um he actually scored at wembley uh the year that we that we lost so so yeah but yeah he, he i always have fond memories of carl Evans. i always remember just we got the ball. He's exciting. Gets you on the edge of your seat. But yeah, so that that was really the only the only question I had. But thanks for having me on. Yes, my friend, it's it's, it's a pleasure. Looking forward to the trip to Exeter. Um, yep. Of course, check out um, John's podcast. Of course, with David Earl, who was on our podcast with Andy and Stu. So check out that episode. But also check out um, John's great podcast with David. Um, my new football club covering all things Exeter City. Um, if you are going to the game, enjoy it. Safe travels. If you're not going to the game. Make sure to cover it um, and watch it with us, uh, all the content that we're bringing you. So bye-bye for now.